A baby boy, innocent and full of life, suddenly vanishes. We are hoping Kristen and Joseph will do what's right and tell us where Chance is. Baby Chance, his parents, suspected drug addicts, now behind bars. In their sober mind, I don't believe that they would do this, but you never know when you're on something. Chilling and exclusive new details. Were there warning signs? Brand new tonight, detectives reveal new clues about evidence in this tragic and gripping case. Please, if you know anything, anything that could help, please share it. That little boy, his whole life ahead of him, now nowhere to be seen. Thanks for joining us. I'm Bob Erzik. Chris Safadi has the night off. I'm Amanda Hall. This is one of the most heartbreaking stories we've ever covered, and it's quickly getting national attention. The tragic story of nine-week-old Chance Walsh from Northport, who's been missing for a month. His parents, Kristen Burry and Joseph Walsh, now under arrest for child neglect. Detectives say they told lie after lie about what happened to their son. Tonight, Chance's family sent a powerful message to his mom and dad, begging them to do the right thing and tell investigators where he is. The Night Beats Adam Wright is live at the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office where tonight's news conference was held. Adam, you were there for the whole thing. What was the mood like there? Well, of course, it was very sad. You could feel the enormous weight of this situation as soon as the grandmother and step-grandmother of Baby Chance walked through the doors at the sheriff's office here today. Obviously, these grandparents want nothing more than to see their grandson again and are desperately praying that he's still alive. We ask for everyone for your continued prayers. Tonight, in an emotional plea for answers in the disappearance of her nine-week-old grandson, the grandmother of Chance Walsh spoke to all of America at the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office. We are begging, begging anyone who has any information as to Chance's whereabouts to please immediately contact Crime Stoppers. Detectives say baby Chance was last seen September 9th at his parents' home in Northport. His mother and father, Kristen Burry and Joseph Walsh, who have a history of drug use, according to investigators, are currently in a South Carolina jail facing child neglect charges. According to their arrest reports, Burry told her stepmother that she despised Chance whenever she looked at him because he was not her other son, Dwayne, who died as an infant. We are hoping Kristen and Joseph will do what's right and tell us where Chance is. Detectives say the parents' accounts of what happened to their son don't match up. Their arrest reports show that Walsh told his mother Chance died in a car crash in South Carolina, while Burry told her stepmother she gave Chance to a stranger at a hotel in Georgia. She said Chance was gone, and I asked her what she meant by that, but I never got an answer. She said she had to give him up. Wink News spoke exclusively to Jennifer Hastings, a close friend of Burry's, who says she doesn't know what to believe. My heart is breaking for Chance. That little boy doesn't have his own voice. Please, if you know anything, anything that could help, please share it. Share it on Facebook. Use your media and get it out there and help us find him. We just want to bring him home where he's loved. I also learned that search teams were at the family's home in Northport today as well as searching a nearby pond. And new tonight, the sheriff's office tells me that at this point, the evidence shows Chance was not with his parents in Georgia or South Carolina. And they also say that there are no searches planned as of right now for tomorrow. Amanda. Adam, Chance's parents are currently facing those child neglect charges that you mentioned. At what point might those charges be upgraded to something more serious? Well, the charge gets upgraded as soon as there's enough evidence to show anything other than neglect. Well, a detective in the case also tells us that Chance's parents will be extradited from South Carolina to Florida within the next four to five days. Amanda. Where is chance. We're optimistic that the child could still be alive. Our hopes is that they are sympathetic to the fact that that is their child and that they will tell us where their child is at. Brand new evidence just released. Mom and dad, suspected drug abusers, far from home, 
but no baby. She went on telling me about how she was ashamed of what she'd become. She wanted to be numb because her baby had passed away. An alarming admission from Chance's mother. She shows me the needle marks on her arm. She says that she's turned into something she didn't want to or whatever. Her son has died three weeks ago. Exclusive video, canines, and machetes, and new details to this desperate search for a helpless baby boy. In an unsettling new twist tonight, during one of those searches, wildlife officers say they pulled this big gator from a canal right behind Chance's home in connection with the case. Also brand new tonight, a critical witness in this tragic story is talking to Wink News, saying she had a conversation with Chance's mother that is very hard to forget. Thanks for joining us. I'm Amanda Hall. And I'm Bob Erza. Chris Safadi has the night off. Here's his picture. We can't show it to you enough. Nine-week-old Chance Walsh, who vanished a month ago. The Sarasota County Sheriff's Office says they're now testing blood uncovered at his home to see if it's from this innocent baby boy. Also tonight, detectives, uh, detectives say Chance's parents, Kristen Burry and Joseph Walsh, under arrest for child neglect, are not cooperating with police. The Night Beats' Kim Powell is live at the family's home in Northport, where several intense searches took place today. And Kim, will Cruz be out there again this weekend? Yeah, I've been checking in with the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office all night. At this point, nothing is set in stone as far as searches go this weekend, but it's been pretty unpredictable out here for the last several days, going from having no activity to suddenly having several detectives searching behind the home. Now, one thing we do know for sure is that the Sheriff's Office says Chance's parents left the state without him. It's been exactly one month since nine week old Chance Walsh was last seen. Since then, there's been several twists and turns in his disappearance. His parents, Joseph Walsh and Kristen Burry, are behind bars and not talking. Um, but at the end of the day, there's two people that know where that child's at. In one of the strangest twists, detectives say Burry said she gave Chance away to a couple in Georgia while they were staying at the Red Carpet Inn in Augusta late last month. Wink News has exclusive surveillance video of mom and dad walking in, hanging around the front desk with no baby in sight. All new tonight, one critical witness says Burry tried to sell her baby clothes. I had a conversation with her about how her uh, son had died three weeks prior, to, and she went on telling me about how she was ashamed of what she'd become. Uh, she just didn't want to feel she wanted to be numb because her baby had passed away. Bailey Christensen says Burry showed her track marks on her arm from doing drugs. Also new tonight, a housekeeper who cleaned the room Walsh and Burry stayed in didn't find any sign of a baby either. I'm the one I saw them, you know, and even talked to the child's father, not knowing, you know what I'm saying, that the baby, a baby was missing. Back here at the couple's home in Northport, detectives say they found blood spatter throughout the house and cadaver dogs locked onto possible traces of human remains near the front door. We're, we're very structured, not just to do searches of canals, searches of properties inside a building, using cadaver dogs. In this exclusive video, deputies were back at the home this morning, searching for clues near the canal behind the family's home. The sheriff's office says they're still holding out hope. We're optimistic that the child could still be alive, um, being that the father had indicated they had given the child away. And wildlife officers tell Wink News that they removed an alligator from that canal yesterday in relation to this case. Right now they're performing a necropsy as a precaution. Of course, as soon as we find out what that necropsy uncovers, we'll bring that to you right away. Bob? Now, Kim, you said detectives say they found blood and possible traces of human remains at the family's home. What's happening with that forensic evidence right now? Yeah, the sheriff's office tells me that they're testing that blood to find out if it belongs to Chance. Now, that could take anywhere from several days to three months to get those results back, so it could be a while before we find out if that's Chance's blood. Bob? Week news begins with breaking news. The only thing we care about right now is Chance. finding our grandson, Chance Walsh. Yep. We will not stop until we find him.
Breaking first at 11 tonight, a heartbroken family desperate and determined to find their precious baby grandson. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Chris Safadi. And brand new tonight, only Wink News is about to speak live to the family of nine-week-old Chance Walsh, who mysteriously vanished a month ago. His parents, Kristen Berry and Joseph Walsh, are now behind bars in the Jasper County Jail in South Carolina, facing child neglect charges. New at 11, we checked in with that jail tonight. It says it has not gotten a call yet from the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office to extradite mom and dad back to Florida. But the big development tonight is Chance's family opening us up to us. Very emotional on Wink News. Night Beats Corey Lazar live outside Chance's home in Northport along with the family. Corey, are they still optimistic that Chance is alive? Yeah, Chris, I've been speaking to family members here at the Northport home throughout the day, and I can tell you they are very strong, they're very united, and they're really sticking together. They are very optimistic that they will find baby Chance Walsh alive and well. I'm joined now by his grandparents. This is, I, I can't even imagine what you two are going through right now. How are you feeling tonight? It, it, it's heart-wrenching. It's it's. An awful thing. I wouldn't wish anybody to ever have to go through something like this. But we're just hoping. Keep keep putting out there any clues, any information, anything you may have seen. Um, all the authorities, FBI, Sarasota County Sheriff's Department are working tirelessly. They are not taking breaks. They are not giving up. We're not defeated. We are still looking for chance we believe he's out there somewhere and we're going to find him and obviously this is very emotional what haunts you the most about all of this whoever's taking care of chance right at the moment we're just hoping that he's being taken care of well and we want them to know we love him very much no matter what may have been told to him or them bring him home we love him we can give him what he needs he's precious to us. I want Chance home. I want him home. And many people have been coming by the house, dropping things off at the fence, teddy bears. Um, right now, you have been going through the home because the landlord really wants you to get everything out of the house. What is that like seeing his clothes, his toys, his food? As grandparents, what is that like? Very, very, very difficult. It's It's been a horrible day. I, I Terrible, terrible day to have to go through and, and see these things and but we're, we're just still keeping hope. We're keeping hope and um, we want everyone to know all the people who generously donated everything to Kristen and Joe and, and with good hearts, everything that's coming out of the home is going to be redonated back into this community um, whether it be care goodwill we're going to make sure it goes to mothers and children who need it and and for a good cause because you all were so good to them and we want to give back we want right. to give it back we want to give it's it back. important to us and their it's house burned up in a fire right now and many community members were donating cribs and strollers and stuff like Everything that to yes. we want to give it back to the community yes. we won't want you to think that anybody took advantage of you right. no we want to give it back to them no and i want to talk about the investigation because this has been an exhaustive search the fbi is involved sarasota county sheriffs they have searched areas multiple times what is it like? You're, you're, you're staying in constant communication with authorities, right? Yes, yes. Um, all the time. They're letting us know what they can let us know right now, but uh, obviously there's certain things that they're doing that we can't divulge, they can't divulge right now because it could jeopardize the investigation that will lead to where he is. And you're holding something that you gave to Kristen something that is very sacred as a mother to give her that has sayings on it. What does it say on the back? Uh, I gave it to Kristen. It's, it's basically a, a poem to mothers to take time, take time with your ch children. And I wrote to her on the back, remember these words every day, love and protect him. Love mom and John. And Kristen Burry and Joseph Walsh are the kids' parents. They're in jail right now in South Carolina. If you were to say one thing to your daughter right now, what would it be? Kristen, you, you need to stop this now and just tell us where he is. This child is loved so much by so many. An entire world right now loves this boy. 
and we just want Chance back. We'll take care of him. So just tell us where he is. Tell us where he is. Tell the truth. Yeah. Tell the truth, Chris. Tell the truth. Well, thank you very much for talking to us, Diana. This was this has just been exhausting for your family. And if you know anything at all, any tips, call the Sarasota County Crime Stoppers immediately. Anything could possibly help them find this baby. Live in Northport, Corey Lazar, Wink News, now. The Sarasota County Sheriff's Office today recovered an infant on this property behind us, that of what we believe is Chance Walsh. Tonight, the search for baby Chance is over. As I said, I cannot give out any additional information at this time regarding the death of this child. All I can tell you is that The Sarasota County Sheriff breaks down while breaking the devastating news. Now, Chance's parents are the prime suspects. Our job is to make sure we do the best job possible um, to bring people to justice and to give uh, justice to a child. Tonight, family, friends, and the world demanding justice for this helpless, innocent boy. And now the seclosure and his grandparents can give him a proper burial. Sorry, this is hard. A very emotional day. The Sarasota County Sheriff's Office breaking the news that none of us wanted to hear. Deputies finding the body of an infant they believe is baby Chance. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Chris Safadi. Tonight, Sheriff Thomas Knight says he's confident it is Chance Walsh, the Northport baby who's been missing for weeks. The Wink News Nightbeat was the first to bring you details last night of the massive search happening in a rural wooded area in Northport. Today, forensic technicians, deputies, and fire units combing the area near Wylam Drive in English Circle, about 13 miles east of Chance's home. Tonight, Wake News has extensive team coverage. Tonight beats Bob Erzik and Adam Ryder live in Northport. We begin with Bob, who joins us live with the latest from where they found the baby's body. Bob, what is the latest there? Well, Chris, right now it's a very silent and somber scene out here right now. If you take a look behind me, you can see that there are still some cones that are up, but no law enforcement officers remain here on English Circle and Wylam Drive. But just hours ago, the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office announced they found the remains of an infant that they're confident is baby Chance Walsh. The nine-week-old baby had been missing for weeks, and right now this is still an active investigation. At this time, the Sarasota County Sheriff says the only two suspects are Baby Chance's parents, Kristen Burry and Joseph Walsh. And tonight, both Burry and Walsh are in a South Carolina jail facing charges of child neglect. Now, over the past month, people have been stopping by the house where Chance Walsh lived, creating a memorial for the innocent baby. I want to bring in the night beats Adam Wright, who's live at the memorial in Northport right now. And Adam, have you seen any activity there tonight after the breaking news that the remains that were found out here could possibly be baby Chance's? Yeah, Bob, we've seen a few people who have come here throughout the night to pay their respects. And if you take a look at the memorial, you can see just how much it's grown over the past few days as a couple candles burn here late tonight. And this poster right over here was added just a few hours ago, and it reads, We love you, Chance. Love your aunt, Nikki, Zach, and three cousins. It also says, we hope you find peace. Now, there was a group of three young women here tonight who said they don't know the family, but just wanted to stop by. Another woman came for a minute, took a photo, and then left without saying anything. And then there was the man and woman who put up this new poster. The woman presumably Chance's aunt, but when we tried to talk to them after, they said they had no comment. We did, however, talk to a couple neighbors who are devastated by today's news. I'm just grateful that they found baby Chance. And now there's a closure and his grandparents can give him a proper burial. Sorry, this is hard. We hope till the very last minute that the baby could be found somewhere, somehow, because we heard the rumors that, that she said she gave the baby away somewhere in Georgia. And late tonight, the grandparents of Chance Walsh, Walsh releasing a statement to Wink News. It reads in part, quote, we would like to thank everyone, the Sheriff's Department, the FBI, and the people of Northport that worked so hard to find baby Chance. The family is heartbroken. There will be a candlelight vigil for Chance this Saturday night. It starts at 7.30 at Peace Christian Fellowship on Sumter Boulevard here in Northport. Bob, back to you. 
Right now at 6, new details are coming to light in the baby Chance case. Wink News confirms the infant's parents will not face the death penalty if convicted. According to court documents, Kristen Burry now faces a homicide negligent manslaughter charge. Joseph Walsh is now charged with second degree murder. The bottom line here, baby Chance's parents are no longer facing first degree murder charges. And all new tonight, a Wink News investigation uncovers Baby Chance's parents have been on the state's radar for a long time. The baby's body was discovered in a field in Northport last month. So how did it get to this point? Wink News investigative reporter Dave Culberth is asking, did the state know about their arrest records, the parents? We discovered they knew a lot more than anyone has told you so far. Dave. Well, Chris, we uncovered that both parents had long criminal records, including violence and death threats. Tonight's story is about the father, Joseph Walsh. Since 2003, he has lost custody of, meaning the Department of Children and Families has removed seven children. Yes, you heard right, seven. And that was long before baby Chance was ever born. In both these cases, there is no question we had system failures that we have to get better at. The head of the Department of Children and Families has admitted that his agency mishandled a tip about the case. But there's more. Wink News uncovered this court document from 2008 with DCF employees' names and phone numbers written on it twice. So we asked DCF, how long has it been dealing with Joe Walsh? The answer, 12 years, since 2003 with other kids from his first marriage. A month-long Wink News investigation has uncovered that Walsh's problems started while he was a teenager when he escaped from a juvenile facility in Okeechobee. By the time he was in his mid-twenties, he and his first wife were raising nine children. That's when court documents show his criminal record started and grew almost by the year. 2002, aggravated assault and battery arrest. Charges dropped. 2004, attempting to strangle his wife's friend. Charge dropped. But it was an incident inside this house in 2006 that led to a felony conviction. Walsh was here visiting his mother-in-law, and according to court records, she says he was on something at the time, then jumped up on the kitchen countertop, lunged at her, and attacked her with her own kitchen knife. He was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, pled guilty, and from there on out was considered a convicted felon. In 2007, he was charged with assaulting his wife again. She wrote, he already knows he will kill her, he just doesn't know when. Charge dropped. In all, there would be 11 charges, including assaulting his own mother and threatening to put his first wife in a body bag three times. Nine of those 11 charges would be dropped. Sometimes they drop because there's an expression at the courthouse, no face, no case. And what that means is if the victim doesn't show up, it's very hard to press charges. Laura Stroffler is a therapist who testifies in court about domestic crimes. They're afraid of being punished by their partner for going to court and what they would say, putting him or her in jail. And they're not happy. And they're, they're not happy and they're, they blame that person very often rather than taking responsibility for what they did. He had told me the things he had done wrong. Chris Callis met Joe Walsh three years ago. He says occasionally Walsh would talk about his first marriage. It was just a bad relationship, fueled by drugs and alcohol. When Walsh was charged with assaulting his first wife, she sent this letter to the judge, writing, I am worried that he will just snap one day and hurt me really bad or possibly even kill me. She also says Walsh told her, I will beat you so bad I probably won't get out of jail. In total, Walsh and his first wife were raising nine kids between them, and eventually the state took seven away. I think because they, he had two f unfit parents. His ex-mother-in-law sent this eight-page letter to the judge, writing that Joe Walsh beat my grandson black and blue in 2004 and his brother. One was 10 years old, the other nine. He, he was a bad father. His love became drugs and alcohol, not his family any longer. Walsh and his wife ended up in halfway houses like this, or homeless. Once, police arrested him for sleeping in this parking lot using a beer can as a pillow. They have a common bond. I don't know, and the common bond wasn't their children. It was the drugs. It was the drugs. But Callis says he helped get Walsh off those about three years ago, sponsored him in AA and gave him a job. I'm telling you, he was a model employee. He never missed work. He was always there, very polite. I mean, he was the type of person that I would not be afraid to have around my family. Until he met baby Chance's mother. I just wish he would have never met Kristen. Kristen Berry. Yes. And that's our story tomorrow night at 6. Who is Kristen Berry? And more on the troubled relationship that ended with the death of baby Chance. Dave Culberth.
Wink News Now. All new tonight, Wink News exposes brand new details in the baby Chance case. The infant was found last month in a shallow grave in Northport. Now his parents are behind bars. Joseph Walsh is charged with second degree murder and Kristen Berry with negligent homicide. Last night we looked into Chance's father's significant trail of violent legal problems. New tonight, Wink News investigative reporter Dave Colbreth talks to Joe Walsh's former boss who says baby Chance's mother brought a lot of this on herself. She was known as the Black Widow. She was. Mm -hmm. So we all called her. Chris Callis knows both Kristen Berry and Joe Walsh well. Callis has been a sponsor or mentor at Alcoholics Anonymous for 35 years. In 2013, he started sponsoring Walsh, and after getting to know him, even hired him to work at his car dealership. He was one of the very few nowadays that I sponsor that I said, this kid's going to be a success. And I would tell people that. And then he met her, and it was like the slide to hell. Her being Kristen Berry. Callis met Barry soon after Joe did and got her into AA as well. Soon, Kristen got pregnant with their first child, Dwayne. It was all about the attention of me, me, me being pregnant. Once Dwayne was born and the focus was on Dwayne now, she just kind of like, was a, it was always about her. She was jealous? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Jealous of her own infant baby? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. One night, Callis went over to this house where Joe and Kristen lived at the time. The smell was so bad in the house, I had to step back outside. The dogs were everywhere, going to the bathroom all over the place. The piles of dog stuff was there so long it was white. Callis says he thought about calling DCF but didn't. And then six days later, I got a phone call from uh, one of the people in AA with me and said, you're not gonna believe it, uh, the baby's dead. The baby, Dwayne, died of kidney failure. Callis helped Joe pick out a suit for the funeral. And while we were walking out of the store, all she said was, he's gonna look better than me now. And I said, what are you talking about? Well, I don't have anything that nice. We ended up at the Sarasota Mall and she's picking out dresses that are five and six hundred dollars. And I said, Kristen, you gotta be out of your mind. I'm not buying that dress. Was she distraught at all? I never saw that in her. Not too long afterwards, Joe and Kristen started talking about having another child. Number one, you're not working. You have no money. You have no vehicle. And now you're back to using drugs and alcohol again. And I'd asked them, where do you see the positive in this? What was her reason? For wanting to have another oh, we baby. love each other. We love each other. We love each other. It'll make our it'll make our lives whole again. And I said that that's sense. That's crazy talk. Nonetheless, Kristen then got pregnant with Chance. Then the house they were renting caught on fire. And supposedly they lost everything, everything they had for the baby, the new baby coming, Chance. So they put on this big bazaar at the Old World restaurant for them. Yeah, like here we go again. <laughs> She's in the spotlight again. <laughs> It just never failed. I mean, it just it was. He had to be around them. Then in late September, when baby Chance went missing, Callis followed the news. When I heard the baby was dead, and everybody in the community that I know that knows this couple, not one of them thought it was Joe. They would have thought it was Joe. However, it is Joe who has been charged with second degree murder, Kristen with negligent homicide. Kristen told investigators that. Chance was struck repeatedly by Joseph, and at one point she told Joseph, you are going to break his blanking neck. You know, we can sit here and speculate on a lot of things. I hate to speculate what I think happened. I believe that the baby wasn't purposely murdered. I believe the baby was neglected due to their use of drugs and alcohol. According to former family members, Kristen Berry had a baby when she was 19. Then, when DCF determined she was on drugs, it gave her the option of having it taken from her or putting it up for adoption. She chose adoption. As far as her criminal record, she was a convicted felon for identity theft also when she was 19. We contacted Kristen Berry's family members for this story. They chose not to comment. Dave Culberth, Wink News Now.